Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here, I'll be taking you guys through the molded Walkinshaw bonnet scoop that I put on my own VL Commodore. I got this part from eBay and it cost me about $380. I chose this one because it had the vent uh, inside there. There's a little bit of a grill that sits inside that hole. So as you can see there, I'm taking off all this black primer or whatever they've put over the top of it. Um, they put that over the gel coating and I don't trust that it. it sort of didn't really look like it had adhesion so I decided to take all of that black off and as you can see here that's all gone I've done a couple of filler repairs just over the worst of the damage and this is the bonnet here um, it was in pretty bad condition but um, I decided I'd rather do a bonnet that was already in bad condition cutting a hole in it rather than the good bonnet that I did have so rather than cutting into a completely undamaged bonnet. So I did skip out this step of cutting that hole out but where that vent is there I did just cut a hole out. I um, measured up where I wanted the part to sit and then I traced out the hole where I wanted it to be and um, cut it out just with an angle grinder. The part that I bought came with some bolts that had been sunk into the fiberglass and then I was able to get a little dob of paint on each one of them put it down onto the bonnet exactly in the spot that I wanted it and the paint left behind a little dab of white where I needed to drill the holes to sink it down into the correct spot. And as you can see before we grinded, uh, we ground with this mini grinder around the edge before we fiberglassed it. I did skip out the actual fiberglassing stage itself. The main reason for that is because I actually didn't even do it. I was busy in the booth and my business partner just said, mate, do you want me to do it? I said, yeah, why not? So that was nice of him. And then I left it overnight, come in the next day and you can see I'm grinding most of this fiberglass uh, and resin back. I do have another video on how to do fiberglassing if you're not quite sure how to do the fiberglassing stage itself. So I cover most of that in there. Um, even read the comment section because there's a few little tips that some of the pros have left behind on that video too. So what I do know about fiberglass is it is a very hard surface. It's a lot harder than any body fillers or anything like that. So if I was just to try and get a, a block and do hand sanding over this, it would take forever. So that's actually why it's a good idea to use some sort of a machine grinder to grind most of it down. Even uh, orbital sander will really struggle with fiberglass sometimes. A few people might be wondering why I decided to mold it in. A um, couple of reasons, because I just reckon it looks cool. It's unique as well. Most of these Walkinshaw bonnet scoops are just sitting on and there's a little bit of a gap there. But um, when I put this on my bonnet, there was um, probably about five or so mil gap between the bonnet and the front of the scoop. So rather than trying to figure a way of getting that to sit uh, right flush with the bonnet, I just decided to fiberglass it all up flush. But I was making sure that when I did fiberglass it, I didn't want to go and push pressure on there to make it sit flush. I just fiberglass that gap up so that I it's not under pressure. So if I'm sort of driving along and I go over a big hump, being that's under pressure, it's, it's more likely to crack. So hopefully this won't crack up. I will be very surprised if it does end up cracking around those edges. It's uh, nicely fiberglassed and it's also got those bolts from the inside. One of them snapped off, so I just used a bit of Sikaflex urethane in there and it seems to be holding quite well. But anyway, continuing on with the job, um, once I was happy, I've got most of it ground down. I just got the orbital sander with some 80 grit onto it to feather out those deeper 40 grit scratches from the grinder. Once I've done that, give it a good blow off with the airline and mix up some bog or body filler, bondo as they may call it in the US and um, be putting some of that around the edge to smooth over any of the pinholes and make sure we've got a pretty nice flush uh, edge around there. Look, um, I'm not going to lie, it's not 100% perfect. If this was a customer's car, then maybe I would have spent a little bit more time on it, but this job here, I've been trying to fit in between doing, uh, making a living, I guess, and doing everyone else's cars. So um, there probably has been a few corners that I've cut, but all in all, it's looking pretty nice. I'll include some footage at the very end of where I'm up to. Um, I'm gonna be going in tomorrow morning and finishing off a couple of bits. The, the plans have changed quite drastically from the start to the finish of this job, the way I was going to go about it. 
But um, a few reasons being that I've decided to move over to Thailand now. So it's actually just a car that's going to get sold. It was originally going to be getting turned into a tribute racing car, similar, similar to the XF that some of you guys may be familiar with. And then I decided, no, nah, I'm not gonna do that anymore. I was gonna do an aero style body kit on it. And it turned out that that kit that I went and spent $350 on was total garbage. It was never going to fit. Um, it was like two inches off fitting the sill basically so i had to cancel the plans of the aero kit altogether and then i've just got some standard uh sill covers that i'll be putting on and running the standard body molds but all in all i think it's going to look pretty mad when it's done still got a little bit to do on it but um follow me along the main reason i'm doing these videos because i do know that there's a few people that wanted to see exactly how i did this it's also pretty important that you get this filler in nice and um nice and even not to too chunky or anything like that um you know even that that finger works absolutely fine in the corners um and it just saves a lot of sanding um and just see how those edges are sort of feathered out there's no big step down it's going to save a lot of sanding and also refilling because sometimes if you've got too much filling in one area you will be trying to sand that out for ages and uh at the same time you'll be sanding the area next to it so you're by the time you've got the um, filler straight, then the area next to it's then low because you've sanded too much out. So pretty important stage getting the application of the filler right. I've had loads of practice. I'm one of those guys that just uh, knocks something into a dent and then bogs it up. I'm not a panel better. I don't claim to be, but all in all, I'm usually pretty happy with the results I get. You can see there all that damage that was under the bonnet here. Um, and you can see where I cut my hole out there. It's not, it's not pretty, it's not perfect, but um, all in all, I'm happy with it. Body filler usually only takes between 20 and 30 minutes to dry. Sometimes you'll be able to sand it in even five or 10. If you heat it up, you put it out in the sun or something like that. Um, and it also depends on how much hardening that you've put in as well. In this case, it actually stayed there for about three or four days. I think I did the body filler on the Tuesday and it came back in on the Friday, finished off the repairs and then got into primer. Um, as I said before, it's just a bit of a filling job. Sometimes if I just see an hour that I can um, get in between work, well then I'll just jump on my car and uh, get stuck into it and get uh, some more progress. So uh, initially I started this job and I was doing all the panels because uh, I had some spare panels off the black one. If you've been following, you know about that. And the idea was get all the panels done and then when I get the body in, I'll just uh, have the car off the road for as little time as possible. That was the basic idea behind that one. So um, I've got the aero body kit all painted. That's all done. It's all painted now. Um, yeah, as I said before, there is a couple of spots that I will be redoing. Main reasons because of the uh, aero body kits not going on anymore and there was some damage below the door molds which I previously decided wasn't worth fixing. However, in hindsight, I should have taken that little bit extra time. So once I'm happy that it was straight enough for my likings with the 80 grit, I went over it with some 180 grit first on the block. And here I'm also using 180 again to just sand the entire panel down with and we'll be taking in the booth, priming the bonnet and at the same time painting the inside. And I've actually got some uh, raw footage of that I uploaded onto my other channel. So uh, if you wanna check out some raw footage, be sure to check out my other channel, The Gunman Raw. There's links in the description below and to my website and Facebook pages and all that stuff. So check it out if you want. Um, and this is that body kit I was telling you about, the aero kit. It would have looked really cool. It's a pretty cool look, I think. But unfortunately, they were just too far gone and unable to really be repaired or fitted. You may have been able to do it, but the amount of time and effort you're going to spend and they'll probably never really be as good as what I wanted. So... This is where the car was up to as of last Saturday, but since then I've uh, thrown all the doors back on there, just on, and the guards are back on too. I've got the boot spoiler on and all those trims around the quarter glasses. I've put the rear windscreen back in. My decision for the engine bay was I would never be able to get the body color the whole way around the engine bay without pulling the engine out, which is a job I really didn't want to do. So being that chassis back, Black is so forgiving. Any overspray, it's easily wiped off. It doesn't look out of place on any of the wires or anything like that. And hey, I reckon that looks fine under the engine bay now. So might 
be a couple of spots I'll spot in. That, uh, there's a little bit of red left, but hey, I'm happy with where it's up to. Hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Now you've seen this video, get out there and paint some shit. And if you can't, go and watch one of those other videos first. Thanks for watching, and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.